All right. I think I think we're good to go. Hello everyone. Hello fish taco salad and welcome to everyone else who is in currently. Welcome to the stream. Today we are going to be going over fish anatomy. So this is going to be another video in our animal series. Um, so we've already done mammals and we have done birds. So today we are going to be doing fish. So we're going to be going over fish anatomy and all the different things that you need to think about when you draw a fish. We're also going to be going over invertebrates and vertebrates because there are a lot of invertebrates in the ocean. Hello, Bl Blood Ryu. Welcome in. There are lots of invertebrates in the ocean and water, right? So we kind of want to go over that because we're not going to go over bugs. So um, I figured I'd go over it now because we don't have a stream for insects. But before we do, let's do the thing that we always do, which is a bit of our ad read. So if you are new here and you didn't know, we are not only a YouTube channel, but we are also an art school. Um, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below and check out our website for class offerings because we're not just a YouTube channel. We are an art school too. So if you'd like to support, whoa, if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content, consider supporting us on Patreon, where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots. So be sure to check those out before they are gone. All right, let's jump into it. Hello, Amaya. Welcome in. Well, I mean, you're constantly here anyway, so <laughs> that's all good. You're here regardless. Yes, hello, hello to everyone who's popping in. Sorry if I sound a little bit, like, under the weather. I don't know what's wrong with me today. I'm just a little bit sleepy. But we'll have to live with that. So, fish are a huge jump from birds and mammals, right? So, before... Well, mammals... And birds are somewhat easy to translate. To humans, fish are not. That's just because, you know, you look at a fish, there really isn't that much similar <laughs> between a human and a fish, right? I don't think you need to... Hello, Duder, welcome in. Um, I don't think I need to be a genius to know that fish and humans are not that similar, right? <laughs> um, so comparing a fish to a human is very different. So let's pull up the skeletons, as we always do to start off. Right? You look at these two, not a lot in common, right? <laughs> There's, they're very, very different. So I think the main thing you can notice is that, you know, we humans, we got arms and hands and legs and all that, right? Fish do not have arms and <laughs> legs and hands, right? Their limbs, quote unquote, are their fins, right? Even though they're not technically limbs, they are their fins, right? So you have a few of their, like, quote unquote, limbs that pop around, right? You'll also notice that they have a very distinct lack of pelvis, right? Some fish do have pelvic bones, right? We have ours, which is very, very pronounced right here, right? But theirs is like not super, super pronounced. I think their pelvis is like down here or something like that. It's not pronounced at all. So it's really hard to see it. <laughs> fish are just head, ribs, and a tail. Basically, I was just about to say. Um, fish, you can think of them as just kind of like elongated, an elongated spine, Right? It's just kind of like one long spine and a lot of ribs, like what Dudu said. Right, It's just a lot of these rib thingies. They got a lot more than we do, though. So basically their entire body is like a rib cage, is how you can kind of think of it. So 
So this is kind of the main thing when you want to point out a human versus a fish, right? But not everything that is in the ocean is a fish, right? You have mammals and you have invertebrates, which we'll get to. But the number one thing I kind of want to talk about is the difference between the mammals versus the fish, right? And the main difference is that even though their anatomy is majorly similar to the fish and actually has a little bit more in common with the human anatomy, it's their spines that are bent differently. So let's take a look at these. I've got three different ones that we can look at here. Let me write out this thought, though, that I said beforehand, which is... Not only fish in the ocean. Fish, yes, hello. Welcome in, tiny Goomba. We are talking about fish. Not only fish in the ocean. But mammals and invertebrae. Oh, can I spell this right? Invertebrae. There we go. Hello and yes, fish, fish, fish. Main diff. Is spine. Whether they have one or have a severe lack of one. <laughs> right? But we'll talk about that after this. I actually don't have a lot to talk about in terms of the lesson today, just because there really isn't that much to talk about <laughs> with fish. Um, it's really hard to kind of translate that to a human, right? Because all you really got to do is just extend the spine, right? Because <laughs> you just got to get rid of the legs and continue the spine all the way down, right? Well, let's talk about these. So this first one up here is a whale. Right? This is a whale and this is a dolphin. Let me write that down. So this is a whale. This is a dolphin. P-H-I-N. Yeah, so whales and dolphins, right? Think of what a whale looks like and think of what a dolphin looks like, right? Their tails move upwards and downwards, right? This curve of their spine, the way that their spines are built, allows their tails to move up and down, right? This is a very common theme within all the, the mammals, right? The mammals that live in the ocean, right? Their tails move up and down. Hi, hello, fish taco salad. <laughs> That's an epic name, honestly. Uh, but yes, here for the fish. We are talking about fish, and I will be drawing technically not a fish, but an invertebrate, but same thing. Um, no, it's not the same thing, but we'll get it. We'll talk about that. But yes, you'll notice that a lot of the mammalian things that are within the ocean all have their tails flip up and down. Some things that I didn't have in here, you know, were, uh, well, penguins don't really have a long tail, but seals, right? Seals and walruses, right? Their tails are flat on the ground, right? If I were to draw a dolphin off to the side here. My epic dolphin. Right, a dolphin's tail moves up and down like this. Same with the whale. But a shark, however, this is a shark, right? A shark's spine, same with most fish, their spine is bent so that the tail moves back and forth rather than up and down. I can't, how do I draw this one? I'm going to have to draw a 3D arrow. <laughs> there we go. So if I do that, and then I could probably do it on this one as well. Up and down. Let's pretend that that looks better than it currently does. One animation exercise when I was back in college was that we had to animate a shark's tail. <laughs> um, but that's the main difference, right? One of the biggest differences that you'll see between a fish versus a mammal that lives in the water. Hello, Angie. Welcome in. Hi, hi, hi. 
Another thing that you'll actually notice that I wasn't actually planning on pointing out, but I guess I will now, is that these mammals, again, similar to a human, right? This is where our arm bones are. This is where theirs are, right? This is their shoulder blade. It's just shifted down from the top here, which is where ours would be. And then this is like their arm, quote unquote, right? These are their phalanges or their fingers, right? That translate into, you know, a fin, a flipper. But again, severe lack of legs. So <laughs> when you're in the ocean, you have a severe lack of legs. Oh, goodness. I guess I should have made this longer. But, like I mentioned, we're also going to talk about invertebrates because... Like I mentioned, we're also going to talk about invertebrates because there is no bug stream. So, and bugs are like all invertebrates. So, <laughs> I'm going to do it in the ocean stream instead because, you know, there's a lot of... you know, invertebrates. And I keep saying that word, but I haven't given a definition yet, so allow me to do that. Tell me about it. Yeah. I don't really know what you're referring to, but yes. <laughs> okay. So vertebrates. Vertebrates. Versus invertebrates. So there are tons of things. In the water. That are. Vertebrates. So our vertebrates you know these are animals that have a backbone. Right? Have a backbone. If you got a spine, you're a vertebrae, right? So humans, we are vertebrates, right? Fish are vertebrates. Mammals are vertebrates, right? There's more to vertebrates, not just this though. These animals also don't have an exoskeleton. And they have complex organ systems. Any y'all have biology? You know that we're complex thingies, right? We got a lot of things in here that some people have to memorize the names to. I am not one of those people, so I'm not going to memorize them, but. cutting out. I'm getting new ones soon. Just I keep saying that every stream, but just I, I, I mean it this time. I'm getting them on Sunday. Just Okay. So they can stop cutting out over and over. To animals that have a backbone, don't have an exoskeleton, and have complex organ systems. So these include mammals, fish, reptiles, birds, and amphibians. I'm gonna lump a, you know, we're gonna have a reptile stream, but I'm gonna lump in amphibians with them too. So that's the frog stream, I guess. <laughs> so we got mammals, fish, reptiles, birds, and amphibians are all vertebrates. And vertebrates make up 5% of the animal kingdom. You thought it was more, no, no, no. Only 5% of the animal kingdom are actually vertebrates. 
right? So the rest of them are invertebrates. Do some quick math, you can probably figure it out before I say it. So, invertebrates animals with no backbone. Right? You got no bones, you're probably an invertebrate. Right? <laughs> if they don't have a skeleton, right? Like a traditional skeleton, they're most likely an invertebrate, right? Crabs also count as invertebrates, right? Because they have an exoskeleton. Right? So invertebrates don't have a traditional skeleton, they got an exoskeleton. So that means that their skeleton is on the outside. Bomb G will have a frog stream. Well, it won't be frog dedicated, but yes, they'll, I'll lump them in with the reptiles. Uh, well, we're very complex, right? You know, we got a lot of organs. We got a lot of things that are inside us, right? Invertebrates, very simple. Nervous system. Right, so invertebrates, not very complex, right? They're kind of like you, you tossed a bunch of organs into a vat of jello most of the time, right? Um, there's not too much that you got to worry about with them, right? Their anatomy tends to be a little bit simpler, a little bit easier to understand compared to ours, right? So we'll have something. So like if you think of like a, actually here, fun fact, um, I believe it's an octopus that has their brain wrapped around their esophagus. So... You know, where our brain is at the top of their head, you know, theirs is where their neck is, if they had a neck, right? It's just all one big lump, right? So there's a fun fact for you. Um, so things that are invertebrates are flatworms, or just worms, arthropods, sponges, and insects are some of the invertebrates, right? Because invertebrates take up 95% of the animal kingdom. All the popular animals are the vertebrates. The other ones that are invertebrates, even though they are the majority, do not take up, uh, or sorry, they do take up the majority of the animal kingdom. Right? So 95% of animals are invertebrates. So this is just a very small amount of <laughs> invertebrates, right? Maybe there are more vertebrates. We just haven't found all the fish, you know what I'm saying? Right? <laughs> There's tons of fish out there. Um, I believe that we've only explored like 5% of our oceans, right? We got a lot of water on this planet, right? You know, they, they say like, uh, like the, not to get all conspiracy theory on you, like, they say, like, oh, the Megalodons, like, some people are, like, believe that the Megalodons still exist. We don't know, <laughs> right? It could. It could. I, it's very popular. It's very plausible, right? Because we've only explored 5% of our oceans, right? It's very plausible that it's still there somewhere. But my thinking is that we shouldn't wake it up, right? Just leave it. If it, if it wants to be left alone, we leave it, right? Think of every single ocean-related movie you have, right? Every single ocean-related <laughs> horror movie you can think of. It's because we decided to poke around. So I just say we leave it, right? I'm not particularly scared of the ocean. But I also believe in leaving stuff alone, right? <laughs> but just like fish themselves, right? Sorry, that was a tangent. Just like fish themselves... Invertebrates Those oceans are full of scary stuff though. They're better unexplored. Yeah, exactly, right? I'm scared that we're gonna wake up something awful, right? I'm okay with exploration. I'm very interested. I love seeing the new stuff that they find, right? But sometimes, you know, they just poke around just a little bit too much and then guess what? The apocalypse happens, right? If any of you are science nerds, don't don't be like them, you know. <laughs> Invertebrates are super difficult. To compare to 
you people. That's what makes it so interesting. Very true. Since it's almost everything. About their anatomy. Their anatomy is different than ours. Right? So invertebrates are really, really difficult to compare to a person, right? These last few streams we've had, right? We've had like, you know, oh, this is how you could translate this into a person, right? Or like, this is how you can understand it a little better. It's a little hard to compare the skeleton of an invertebrate if it doesn't have one, right? It's a little bit hard to compare that anatomy, right? So 99% of the time, right, they're very, very separate. And if you do have something that is like part invertebrate, it's very much fantasy, right? You kind of make up that anatomy. There's no real way to do it correctly. Right? It, you can, like, mess around with a fish and make it quote-unquote correct, right? But, like, invertebrates and insects and stuff like that, you're gonna kind of have to, uh, you know, question marks? <laughs> it's just some cute little fishies, I promise. Yeah, yeah, it's all just cute things down there. hundred percent. You know? <laughs> it's all cute down there. hundred percent. Never, never seen a... Never seen any of the horrifying things down there. So let's make this just a little bit smaller because that's actually the entire lesson portion. Because I knew that this lesson portion was going to be quite short, I was planning on making this illustration a bit more complex. Right? Uh, how much does 5,000 come out? Oh, that's a lot. Uh... Okay, there we go. So I knew that this one was going to be kind of short because there really isn't that much to say about fish in terms of like comparing them to people, right? I always struggle teaching fish because I'm like, how do I compare this, right? I can do reptiles just fine. I can do birds and mammals just fine. It's fish. The fish somehow always trip me up, right? So. But yeah, there's not too, too much to say in terms of this. So we can focus instead on the final illustration, which if you voted on the poll for this week, Dumbo, the Dumbo octopus is what won, is what won, which is hilarious because that's the only invertebrate I put on the list. Everything else is like a fish or some kind of mammal, mallian thing. Um, but I want to make this illustration a little bit more complex. So slightly cleaner than the past ones. Let's make this a little bit. I always like cool because I want to make this one a little bit more complex compared to the past ones. Let's open up my reference. If, if you don't know what a Dumbo octopus is, it is my favorite octopus. I have it as a plushie. Very excellent. Um, <laughs> my favorite thing ever of the Dumbo octopus is that one video where a bunch of scientists found one in the deep dark deep down. And, like, they just immediately started, like, they were like, oh, it's so cute, he's so shy, right? That's my favorite video ever of a Dumbo octopus. So that is the reference image I'm using of that Dumbo octopus, and I will be using that video as inspiration for this illustration, because I feel like drawing a cute octopus. Because I've been drawing a lot of not-quite-cute things as of late. So I'm in the mood for something slightly more adorable. So he's a little squishy. He's a little small and squishy. It's called the Dumbo Octopus, by the way, because of his little ears, which are similar to the Elephant Dumbo from Disney. Underrated Disney movie. Just saying. I haven't seen the 3D CGI one, but <laughs> look at him. Look at him. I love him. Um, I haven't seen the 3D CGI one. I am too scared to because I am a big fan of the original. As much as I love Guillermo del Toro, and I think it was... Oh, Guillermo del Toro and I think it was Tim Burton that did the, the 3D animated one. I don't think those two will mix very well with Dumbo, right? And I was too scared to watch it, so. But 
original, the original one, which you can find for, uh, which you should definitely not try to find for free somewhere. Um, but it is probably very easy to find because it's a, it's a really old movie. Yeah, right, they're cute and little. Yeah, this one was uh, in the middle of the deep down, deep down. Sea bunny, sea bunnies are a invertebrate as well because they are a breed of sea slug. Yes, I'm feeling. I'm trying to remember what this video was because like it started like wrapping its tentacles around it. It was so cute. I love this video so much. If you haven't seen it, please watch it. Just look up like scientists find cute Dumbo octopus and you'll probably find it. <laughs> the easiest way to make something look cuter is to have the face a little more compressed. Have a little bit rounder. And again, because it's an invertebrate, kind of hard to get this one right or wrong. Because truthfully, there's no right or wrong way to do it. <laughs> you know? There are no bones. How do you get the skeleton wrong if there are no skeletons to begin with? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm kind of thinking... I could go, like, the Splatoon route and, like, have, like, the... The tentacles up top. Like I'm not I'm not feeling that. I'm kinda of feeling I've been in like a mer mer person kind of mood as of late. I drew one the other day because uh one of the upcoming streams, which we haven't uh put up yet, but they're coming, is going to be a superhero redraw. I believe during the summer we're gonna go back to just temporarily, we're gonna go back to like the the kind of like just request streams, which are less lessony, more like pop culture y. Um Am I drawing Grayson or a random person? Just a random person. I drew Gray last week. I can't do him again. <laughs> I can't draw Grayson again <laughs> twice. He's shy. He's shy little octopus. He's so cute. I'm, like, oh. I'm sorry. I'm just like, I'm thinking of that video again. I'm like, no. <laughs> Baby. Look at him. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, one of the streams that's coming up is a superhero redraw. So, like, I had to illustrate the thumbnail recently, and I was like, I struggled so hard with that. Because I'm like, I don't know that much about superheroes. I'm going to be real. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. I don't know that much about superheroes, but um, all I know is that, that uh, here's, a, here's a hot take, even though it's not that... Uh, not that controversial. The The new one with Jason Momoa. Listen, Jason Momoa is a beautiful human being, but man, that movie was not good. <laughs> that costuming was awful, dude. I was like, I, re I know it's accurate to what he actually looks like, like Aquaman, but I am not here for that. Yeah. Little baby octopus. Like, I am not here for that that Jason Momoa look, right? And I was like, I, was like, I gotta redesign Aquaman. Like, there's no... <laughs> just to, like... Just to, like, make him look a little bit better, you know? And then I was, like, researching what I could do. And I was like, oh, seahorse. And I got kind of inspired by seahorses. And... So then I ended up drawing him as, like, here's, here's my, here's an actual hot take, right? I think Aquaman would be infinitely cooler if he actually just was a mer person, right? You have this dude who's just in, like, this orange span, scaled orange spandex, right? I just think he'd be cooler if he just had, like, a fishtail, right? I think that'd be cooler. I'm just saying. Little opinions here at the Wink Kibbis channel. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. We're not, we don't try to be controversial here. But 
Hot take. I'm sorry if you're an Aquaman fan. I just think that he would be better if he was straight up just a person. I think that would be cooler. I'm gonna try to fix this ear because this is bothering me. It's kind of like. shy. Yeah, I want to make this one a little bit more elaborate, so I am going to do a second sketch pass, just so I can work this out a little bit more. Tentacles are not hard to draw. They just take a long time. <laughs> They're not hard at all. Right? It's like a long tube with a bunch of circles on them, right? In rows of two, depending on which octopus you're drawing, I think, actually. But usually they're in rows of two, and they're really easy to draw. It's just that they take a long time because of all of those suction cups, right? So some of my friends have come up with the genius idea to create just their own tentacle brushes with that pattern. I think they designed him specifically to f Hello, Smilon. I think they designed him specifically to fit in with the themes of the other heroes. Yeah, and I'm, n I'm not a huge fan of how they look either. I'm gonna be honest with you. I <laughs> There's very few heroes that I like the look of. The villains just end up looking a lot cooler. And I was like, listen, man. I get wanting to have, like, the bright colors and what, you know, but I'm like, man. That's... <laughs> This is why Batman's design is superior, because it's just dark colors, and it's an easier palette on the eyes. Um, even Robin's palette is, like, I, I quite like Robin, but even still, like, the, the, the... I'm a fan of complimentary palettes, too, but man, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to start discourse, because I know that some people are really into superheroes, and that ends up making people's blood boil, so, like, I'm not gonna poke the bear too much, you know what I'm saying? I think I'm gonna end up having way too much fun with this. It's always, like... <laughs> You can always tell if I'm having just a little bit too much fun with an illustration, if, like, I start to kind of go silent a little bit more often, or if I'm struggling. It's either if I really like it or if I'm struggling. And this time around, it's just me going, like, yes, this is very fun to draw. <laughs> Sorry if I'm a little bit sniffly, too. I don't know what's up today. I think it's just because I left my window open last night and now there is that. Or because I dusted. So it's like my whole room is a little bit dusty. <laughs> That's my fault. So. I am the only one here to blame. But yes. Easiest way to make anything look cuter is if you just compress their face a little bit. Give him a baby face. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Yes, I want to do full shading on this one. The previous streams, I've just been like, uh, th here's a really quick shading <laughs> that I put on this one. I want to do full. I want to go all out on this one, just because I know the lesson portion was really, really short. So this one's going to be one long illustration. Oh, I forgot the actual Dumbo octopus. I always draw the, the other, the actual animal, too. What should I have him? I'll have him s sleeping here. <laughs> I have a plushie of the Dumbo octopus. Appropriately, I have named him Dumbo. Because I bought him when... It, where I am, there's a there's a, a really big aquarium near. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's a really big aquarium near where I am. And I in, I saw the plushie, and I, it, I was like instantly like, no, I need that. <laughs> Just like, impulse bought it. Baby Dumbo Octopus. I 
Okay, now we can keep going with the actual illustration because I have the little double octopus there. Number one thing, if you're drawing any kind of mer person, right, is to kind of, because any kind of mer person, right, their their torso is where the the like thin portion or the wherever the bottom half is where that changes, right. So the best thing you can do, instead of just making it like a perfect straight line, like say if you had like a, it's like A posing on you, right? Say if you had like a person, right? Instead of just making a straight line with the tail, right? It's better if you draw them so that it like fits the anatomy. So like if you take the obliques, I'm getting better at memorizing them because like of ring fit adventure. But if you take the obliques and kind of let that merge into the tail, right? If you're drawing them with a tail or like the tentacles, right, it's easier to merge it that way so it feels a little bit more like a seamless transition. Yeah, these are the uh or the V as some guys call them, right? The, they're the deep V. Also known as the external obliques, I think is what they are. Yeah, I'm getting better at memorizing the muscle names because <laughs> Ring Fit will always quiz me. <laughs> What muscles are on the sides of your your body? And like sometimes I get it right just by guessing, but like I, if it's just sometimes like my family will be there and they're like, oh, that's the blah blah blah, and I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah, that's what that one is. And I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I didn't know that, but thank you. But yeah, if it's just me, I get it wrong most of the time. Yeah, easier, it's nicer to draw mer people with that kind of smooth transition. Alright, well not easier, but it, it certainly looks nicer. Also, your tails should be kind of big, you know. It should match the size of what, it should match the length of what your legs are, and then some. Right? <laughs> it shouldn't be just the size of the legs, because then it might feel a little bit too short. So, you can have shorter fishtails. Right? I'm a very big fan of really long mer people tails, but like Wish I found you before Mermaid Pass. Yeah, really. I realize I'm talking about this uh mid June. But <laughs> Yeah, what did we do for Mermaid? I don't think we had a Mermaid stream. I don't think we did. I think we just had like Did we? I don't remember. <laughs> I'm sorry. I forget everything. Let's look at this for a second. Uh, let's look at my files. No, we didn't have a mermaid stream. Oh, no. We did a... Uh, in May, we did that Star Wars one. Yeah, we did the Star Wars illustration. And then, like, two dragon people. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> But yeah, important things to keep in mind when drawing mer people. You can draw mer people whenever you want. Doesn't need to be mermay. The Dumbo octopus is kind of like he's a little bit thicker. He's a little bit squishier. So I'm like these tentacles aren't very flat. I'm kind of taking this into account. Trying to think of them as like a 3D shape, right? They're tubes, they're not just they're not just ribbons, right? They're tubes. And they're all kind of connected as well. Because they got a little bit more skin. This this flubbery stuff. <laughs> Hi, hello Gabriel or Foxman. Welcome in. Welcome back. So cute. Yeah, thank you. I'm trying to make this character as cute as possible. I just like When you're an artist, your greatest superpower is being able to flip flop between something absolutely adorable and something nightmare inducing. If you have the ability to do that, you're golden. <laughs> I say a lot of things will make you golden as an artist, but that's one of them. Truly harness the duality of man. By being able to flip flop between genres at will. <laughs> I 
inspiration. Inspiration. I mean, that's one, two, three, four. That's his name. Okay. And there's a little Dumbo octopus down here too. I always think that the eyes are cuter without the without the the sparkle. <laughs> Sometimes I think that the sparkle is just a little bit too much. I kind of like just the period eyes. Oh, I forgot his hair. LOL. <laughs> Let's draw that back in. Dang, we're not even at the top of the hour yet. I haven't even started lining. Excellent. That means I can spend more time with the lines. And the colors. So we can have a nicer shade this time around. When drawing hair, always keep in mind where the hair is growing from, and it makes it a lot easier to figure out how it flows. Right? So I got a crown right here, so everything will be flowing out from that direction. Always good to keep that in mind. I love teaching about hair. But <laughs> it's always kind of hard to expand it into one full lesson. <laughs> Let's switch to the pen tool. Let's go. And let's turn up the correction this time because now I'm going to be paying attention more. Baby octopus. Yeah, depending on which fish was chosen, it would change the mood of the, <laughs> the illustration. I think at one point the arowana was winning. And if the arowana had won, I would have done like this kind of like massive, massive mer person that was just a little bit more. Uh... I think it was the Asian arowana that I put on, so I would have done like a more like uh, Chinese heritage kind of drawing. Mo mainly because arowanas are considered good luck. The red ones are considered good luck. So usually they're kept as household pets. But I think I would have wanted to do some kind of like royalty drawing if that was the case. If the arowana had won. But the Dumbo octopus is the one that prevailed. So you get this cute illustration instead. <laughs> what else was there? I think there was the salmon shark. If you have never seen the salmon shark, please Google it. It's like a great white shark, but a chibi. It's fantastic. I love that thing. I think I put up an eel as well. An eel would have been a more regal drawing as well. There we go. Yeah, you can always tell when I know that I have more time because I'm like taking my time a little bit quicker. What about a fish taco salad? Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna be legit. I've never had a fish taco salad before. I've never, oh no, I have have had fish tacos before. I've never had a fish taco salad. I did have a tuna salad the other day. That one was pretty good. One thing that I, I don't know how many people have had before is a tuna ahi club salad, or a tuna ahi club sandwich. Those are so good. Do I prefer cute or horror drawings? Depends on my mood. More often or not, I, I tend to default to the cute drawings because they're just a little bit easier. But I do love doing horror, especially on like nights where I'm just kind of feeling like, I don't feel like doing anything cute. That it's like the horror kind of pops out and I feel like doing something kind of terrifying. Those are always fun to do as well. Um, but overall, it depends on my mood. I think the horror gives me a different kind of challenge than the cute does. Because I spent like most of my life just drawing very cute things. So then the horror is like, how do I make something new out of horror? Because it's like, there's so you can get so experimental with horror, right? But yeah, depends on my mood overall. <laughs> but yes, tuna ahi club sandwich. If you are not a vegetarian and you have the ability to get one of those, very good. <laughs> it, it's it's kind of expensive. <laughs> um, it. it I had mine at Joey's. It was like a coffee. It was like a dining place. But man, those are good. Same with uh, prawn and lobster ravioli. Now that's kind of expensive, so don't get that. <laughs> but I mean, eat it, but still. 
I'm trying to watch what I eat because like now I'm like exercising more and I'm like I should probably kind of you know watch what I'm doing <laughs> you know what I'm saying oh I need to flip this canvas is that anything actually that's pretty good nice not bad usually there's something I could fix that's like I'll see if there's anything when I turn off the lines later Normally I wouldn't go with like these super, with like everything, I wouldn't go with these super long kind of single track strokes, but like Medibang always makes me want to. <laughs> it's like, for some reason, it's like so sharp, but I'm like scared of doing, of doing like the faking it kind of lines, which work really nicely in Photoshop and Clip, but like I'm always scared to do them in Medibang for some reason. If you don't know what I'm talking about, when you, I think I talked about it with the uh, line art stream, which you can find on our channel if you didn't watch it um but i talked about like usually how when you're doing your line work you kind of want it to be in one long stroke so it looks a little bit cleaner um there is the possibility of having a lining style that's a little bit more messy messy line art however is very like messy and deliberate line art is very difficult to achieve because it takes a lot of practice and a lot of understanding about art styles and stuff like that so it's like it's really hard to do um, one thing that you'll notice a lot of uh, younger artists or more beginner artists do with their lines, they do something called feathering. And feathering is when like you do a bunch of lines that kind of look like that, right? They end up looking really messy, not deliberate. Like most of the time you want your lines to be one single track, right? Just to make them look a lot smoother. If you struggle with those, you can just always fake it a little bit by just going over the line back and forth. So it looks like it's one long track, even though it's a few. Oops. Ha! I changed my... That's right, I changed my shortcut. <laughs> Instead of it being Control-Y to redo, like, it, now it's Control-Shift-Z just to match my, uh, my Photoshop window. But if you didn't know, shortcut on that is Control-Y to redo stuff. Okay. I love drawing hair. Hair is like... Most of the detail when you draw hair should remain at the ends, right? The extremities. So like whether that's the, the hair part or the, the ends, right? The tips. That's where most of your detail should be. In the majority of the hair itself, you shouldn't have too many lines in here. It'll end up looking really, really busy. I'm kind of already making this hair look a little bit busy. But that's okay. I'll live with it. I always find hair the easiest to line just because it's like, oh, that could be fixed. Hair is like, um, it's easier to do the long single track lines with hair because I'll move fast regardless with hair. Oh, I want to try a different, I'm thinking about it now. Oh, I want to light this. <laughs> I want to try to see how well I can do this in Medibang because I could probably do it easily in Photoshop, but I'm not sure about Medibang. So, I want to try a flashlight kind of look because that's what it looked like on the camera. Goodness gracious, why is this line giving me so much grief? There we go. Okay. Sorry, it's a lot of just like lighting triangles right now because of the hair. <laughs> I'm gonna have to draw these little suction cups too. That's gonna take forever. It's a good thing I gave myself some extra time. Is 
It's kind of funny that I was talking about seafood on the, <laughs> on the fish stream. Seafood is just really good, guys. I had clam ch I made clam chowder with my dad a couple weeks back, and I'd never had it before, and it was so good. Like, oh my god. Clam chowder is so good. <laughs> it's always the hair. Always the hair. Hello, Yuri. Welcome in. Usually the hair doesn't take me this long, but like I'm taking my time this time around. I'm also like, I might need to change some of the thicknesses too because it doesn't match. It doesn't match the face, so I'm gonna have to fix it. Yes, Yuri is ever present. She'll pop in and out every once in a while. <laughs> She'll pop in and out. It's like a, like a ghost, <laughs> a specter. <laughs> the specter of the Wing Canvas channel. What is happening downstairs? I'm just hearing, like, I think it's my brother who's, like, messing around. Watch it not be my brother. My house is being invaded right now. I shouldn't joke about that. <laughs> That's gonna come back to bite me in the butt one day. Goodness gracious, this section is not making sense. I need to redo it. Bruh. I'm a ghost, indeed. Wouldn't it be epic to be a ghost? Just like have the ability to just haunt everything all the time. Imagine being a ghost that, like, isn't Because, like, I, I know that, like, usually ghosts are, like, tethered to a place. But imagine if you weren't and you just had, like, the ability to just go anywhere. It'd be so cool to travel the world. Just, like, as a ghost. Nobody's interfering with you. You can just kind of, like, float around. See all the places you've never been to. Go into the Amazon rainforest with no consequence and just see what's there. Go to the bottom of the ocean and figure out what else is down there. Explore the <laughs> explore the other ninety five percent of the ocean that scientists can't. That would be pretty sick. Not gonna lie. Hey, Jesse, he's adorable. Thank you. Yeah, for those who don't know, ninety nine percent of the time I will be drawing boys. It's just uh, I prefer to draw men, <laughs> unless I specify most of the time who I illustrate will be a boy. I've had I've had uh, kids actually ask me why that is. It's like you're a girl. Why do you prefer to draw boys? I'm like, you know what? I have no clue. It's just a preference of mine. <laughs> I find it more fun. I don't know. I just want to give him cake. I don't know how octopuses, how octopi, octopuses would feel about cake. This hair is so fluffy. I didn't mean to make it this fluffy, but maybe it makes sense because he's underwater. I don't know. We'll just pretend that that's the case. <laughs> we'll pretend that what I'm doing always makes sense. Yeah, let's just pretend that every everything that I draw makes sense. Always. I'm doing is just kind of fixing up the line waiting in some areas because I want some areas to stick out more than others right so the silhouette overall is what I want to stick out the most so I'm kind of thickening up these lines and letting the extra lines that I have in here kind of fade into the background a little bit more Yeah, for those of you who are just joining, I am basing this Dumbo octopus off of that video of the scientists who find a Dumbo octopus and just call him cute for like three minutes. That's my favorite video ever. <laughs> a 
I'm assuming that means I want to give him head pats. I don't steal his head pats from him. Shy Dumbo octopus. He's so cute. I'm like, I, I'm sorry. It's like every single time that like and now it's brought up, like I just think about it again. I'm like, oh. I love him, baby. Next week we'll have someone cooler because we're doing. Re oh no, next week is movement. The week after, we'll have someone cooler because we're doing reptiles. <laughs> Compared to the cuteness of this week. Am I a furry? I am not. I have nothing against furries. I think it was like back in high school there was like a it was a bunch it was like a huge running joke that I was a furry and it just got really annoying at some point. So I was like I just got <laughs> I got so mad at one point. But I am not. No. taking my sweet time with this lining. I should probably hurry it up though because I know that these little the set suction cups are going to take me ages because if I want to do some like fancier <laughs> shit, uh, if I want to do some like fancier lighting then I'm going to have to hurry it up with the lines as well. Good absolute grief. These headphones keep on you don't want Jesse, man. You know, don't make me mad. <laughs> I'll just get real quiet. <laughs> I've only ever exploded at anyone, like, once. Hello, Gabriel. Welcome in. <laughs> baby man, fishy baby boy. I think most artists at some point in their career are called a f it's called a furry TBH. Very, very fair. I feel like people, if they just see, like, ears that are not human ears on somebody, they're just like, oh, you're a furry. I'm like, buddy. <laughs> Okay. Octo lad. I think I've said it before, but I'm constantly turning off my sketch and turning it back on so I can check what my lines look like with and without my sketch, right? Because you see all those posts, it's like, oh my god, I... I lined this whole thing, and I liked the way the sketch was, so let's turn off the sketch now and see how my lines looked, and now they look awful, and I don't know why, right? It's because you're not checking. Check to see what your lines look like without the sketch, so then you can improve upon it while you're working. Sorry, my voice cut out. Easier to do it that way. Good grief. I am so excited to get new headphones. <laughs> I love these headphones, but man... I don't think we'll ever get sponsored by Razer, so don't don't get Razer products, guys. Just don't do it. I know I know they're like the aesthetic. I'm getting a new mouse too. I have a Razer mouse as well. My God, just I can't deal with these anymore. <laughs> Okay. 
I'm trying to keep up the integrity of the flow of all these tentacles as well without having too many tangents because I know that because of this, it, the way that I've kind of drawn this, I know there's probably going to be a tangent or two. If you don't know what a tangent is, it's kind of like when things with your line art align way too perfectly. And you don't want that, right? You want to avoid tangents at all, at all costs. It's like I'm trying to avoid tangents as much as I can, but I have a feeling I'm going to have a few regardless, which is going to annoy me, but I'm going to have to live with it. <laughs> oh, actually, that's 501. Let me finish the general outline of this, and then I can we can talk a bit about the studio for those who are new. That one looked like it was going to be a tangent for a second. As long as we just avoid that, we're all good. The best thing about doing thick liner is that it's really easy to fix. <laughs> Very nice dream, Jesse. You're a great artist. Thank you. And like I'm, while I stream, I have like a mental checklist of like things that I have to do, like other illustrative work that I have to do. Like I'm thinking about like the pages that I have to finish. <laughs> For those of you who ever think about uploading to like Webtoon versus to Pass, right? To Pace, however you pronounce it. To pay stick, to pay stick, I don't know. They're, they both, up, they have very different <laughs> uploading dimensions. So just keep that in mind <laughs> when, if you ever decided to upload to one or the other. Personally. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not going to say that opinion. Just in case. But... <laughs> Yeah. Upload a comic. They're fun to do. Even though they're very taxing, but they're fun to do. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Thanks for joining. Forever. Okay. <laughs> oh, right. Once I finish these general outlines of the tentacles, then we can get to the midway talk, which those who have been here for a while know about already. Hi, hello, welcome in. I'm so sorry, I can't pronounce that name, but hello, welcome in. <laughs> welcome to the fish stream. Which is ironic because I'm drawing an octopus, not a fish. Because the octopus is what won the poll. Do you need to take either computing or business studies for a GCSE for a career in digital art? Hello, Amara. I have no clue what those are, so no. <laughs> computing or business studies for GCSE for a career in digital art? I don't even know what that is. No, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, usually you just need a good portfolio <laughs> when it comes to any kind of art, you know what I'm saying? Some artists, some professional artists didn't even go to school.
they're just really good at what they do. You know, that's the fun thing about art, but it's also the risk, right? You don't necessarily have to go to school to be an artist, but art is also a one in a million kind of job, right? So people go to school to up their chances, but it only ups their chances maybe slightly, I'd say. Isn't there a GCSE for art? I don't know what that stands for. I don't <laughs> What does GCSE stand for? Widow C friend looks adorable. The more adorable, the better. C friends. <laughs> no problem, but I'm glad that you both could make it in. Welcome, welcome. The pain of living in a different country. The question was mostly for GCSE subjects. I don't know what that means. I am Canadian. I've never heard of that before. G now I'm curious. GCSE. Oh, General Certificate of Secondary Education. Oh, wait. I know what this is. <laughs> LOL. Um. Uh, the pain of living in different... The question was mostly for GCSE subject. Um, you don't need computing or business studies. You just need art. <laughs> when you do digital art, if you're applying for a post-secondary to learn to do digital artwork, you just have to see what, um, what your college or university requires. You got to figure out what requirements they have. Um, for me personally, I didn't take either of those. Uh, for me, when I got into game art school, I did media arts and visual arts. Um, and that was enough. Right? And then usually it's like just get like a good grade in english and then you're you're good to go um but it does depend on where you're going you just got to check the requirements that they have Yeah, if you're kind of looking for the post-secondary kind of option, then you're going to just want art, basically. There isn't really a lot of... Digital art is still considered kind of new, so, like, they're not... There aren't really any specified, like, classes as far as I'm concerned. Okay! Cool. Okay. 508. So you know what that means. It is time to talk about the studio. So if you did not know, um, our studio is not only a, this is, you know, not just a YouTube channel. We are also an art studio and an art school. So if you'd like to check out any of the classes that we offer, be sure to check out the link in the description to our website there. You can check out all the classes that we offer, all the other things that we offer up there, as well as the blog. And those are filled with free resources. But if you like this illustration and you want to know more about this lesson that I did before I started this illustration, you're going to have to join our Discord. And that's where I'll upload the JPEGs to the finished different, um, the finished products of all of these illustrations and lessons but you'll notice once I finish this one this will probably have a lot of layers and if you want to see any of those layers again you're gonna have to join our patreon which is where you can download my working files as well as get behind the scenes sneak peeks about our studio um, because I am not the only person who works here I am one of many um, I'm just a person who streams so um, if you'd like to check out more about our studio learn more about us be sure to check out all the other links. Everything is the link in the description. I believe Nightbot will just tell us all the things that we have as well. I already chose art. I have two years to prepare, but thanks anyway. Of course. Yeah. And good luck with your exams. I know it's final season for all you high schoolers. My brother is in finals week as well. So good luck to y'all. Hang on, I gotta look this up because I don't remember how to do this thing. Can I see your little suction cups, please? Oh, does it have teeth underneath there? Not suction cups? LOL. It might, actually. 
Oh, it's got like single rows. Oh, that makes my life easier. Okay, cool. He's got like little single rows. So the rest of these are just like flaps of skin. Okay. Buy lots of layers. She means like six. I think I'm actually going to go kind of experimental with this one. So I might do more than just the six usually <laughs> that I usually do. And there's a lot of suction cups on these ones. Oh my god, I'm going to have to do another layer or else I'm going to get annoyed. Yeah, so most octopi, octopuses that you'll see will have like just will have like two rows of suction cups. This Dumbo octopus apparently just has one. So it's like, you know, just the one. But again, it, it, they're really easy to draw. Like tentacles are not that hard to draw. They just take a long time. I have it kind of open as a reference off to the side because I had no clue how to draw this one. I'm like more in tune with like the more common octopi. Like the blue ringed and the common octopus in the number. Those all have like two rows of tentacles. This little one only has one row, from what I can see. I'll just look up the octopus tentacles. There we go. It'll make my life easier. Can I see the undersides, please? How come this one is telling me that they have spines now? What? What? <laughs> what am I looking at? <laughs> Why are these so hard? <laughs> Sorry, you can't see my screen right now, but it's just me kind of struggling to figure out how this works. Oh, I see. Okay, no, so I'm right. It's just like a single one. Okay. You can't see the la the, the thing I'm looking at. It's this. Uh, this image. This is what I'm looking at. So it's just got like a single, this eye is horrifying. It's just got like a single row of uh, suction cups instead of like the dual row that a lot of other octopi have. So I'm just going to have to focus on the single kind of row that's going on here. Because I will always just have a reference open to the side. Which also means that I kind of drew this wrong. But I think it looks cuter this way, so I'll keep it. Adios, I'm going to watch some other videos on the channel. Okay, have fun. If you ever want to come back to this one, it will always be saved as a live replay as well. You're going to hear a lot of my voice and a lot of Rachel's voice, so... <laughs> if you're not sick of hearing me yet. Yeah, it's like they're not hard to draw. It's just the same thing over and over, and it just gets, like, really boring <laughs> over time. <laughs> This is why I put it on a separate layer, so then it's easier for me to get rid of this extra line here. So then I don't have to worry about it getting in the way. Yeah, the one thing I don't really like about Medibang is like, if one thing has correction or smoothing on it, like if the, the brush has correction or smoothing, then the eraser does too, and I'm like, buddy. <laughs> Please just separate them <laughs> so they're not all on one single thing. You know, it's one thing I told myself I was going to draw again, then I just never did. It was the, um, Way back when, when we did that Pokemon stream, like the Pokemon Shijinka stream, I wanted to draw those characters again because they were really fun and I kind of wanted to do them <laughs> more elaborately than I did on stream because I was going really fast. So then I ended up not being able to finish most of them. But they were really fun to do, so I kind of wanted to do them again and then I just never did. I think that one got condensed down into a shorter video as well, so you don't have to watch the full live stream if you want to watch what I did then. But... Yeah, that was a fun one. And just designing them. I was just happy that I didn't have to design a Charizard. I think that was the one thing I was praying about. I'm like, please don't make me do a Charizard. I'm 
Charizard or Charmander? Because they're just so overdone. And I was like... I expected Pikachu to win anyway in, like, the poll. Me, if I don't have to design another Charizard Charmander character. <laughs> Yeah, so like I, I try not to add too many layers, but be be like smart with the layers that you create, right? I create other ones if I know that it'll help me with the process, like if it'll make it a little bit faster, right? Like separating these sub suction cups first from the lines, so then it's easier for me to edit it afterwards. I know that some artists just add, like, new layers for everything. And, like, I can't do that. <laughs> like, they just have a new layer for every single character. I'm like, that's so many layers. I can't deal with that. Um, but this is, like, something that I do. It's, like, if it's, like, if I have something that I know there's going to be a lot of repeated areas in or it's going to interfere if I keep them on the same layer, it's just easier if I do it on two separate ones. It's, so, like, suction cups or spikes or plating, stuff like that usually good to keep on different layers. Okay, I think that's all the suction cups that I need to draw. So let me just merge these real quick. And then we can do my favorite trick, which is the magic wand select. Which just makes it a lot easier to just select everything, inverse it, get your colors in real nice and quick. I'm just going to choose what color I think the majority of this character will be. Or not the majority, but I always kind of choose like the skin tone first. Whoops. Let's make this the layer. That might be too close to the orange that I have. I'll figure it out. Okay. And then I can just lock this. Easy. Let's turn this off because if I turn the correction on when I color, it's going to annoy me. I can't paint bucket this either because there's no harsh lines that I can go off of. The best thing about the Dumbo Octopus is like it's just all orange. <laughs> like there's not that much color variation that I have to worry about. I am, however, going to blend in this area to make the transition just a smidge smoother. Hey, Jesse, when's your webtoon being released? Was it Tuesday? It's Monday, for those of you who are wondering what Yuri is talking about. I have a comic that's going to be released soon um, on webtoon and to basic, so it's going to be on this Monday, the 21st, 12 p.m. EDT, or 9 a.m. PST. Hi, hi, hello, welcome back, Angie. Angie Smith. Glad to have you in. Still drawing our little Dumbo boy. These, these ears are like kind of clear. Oh, I guess I can get fancy for those too. Because those are kind of like a lightish orange. Should he be ginger? Should he be like, or should he have like red hair? That'd be kind of cute. I'm going to give him freckles. <laughs> I don't have a lot of characters with freckles. Like, I've realized I don't have a lot of characters with freckles. So I'm like, I kind of want to add freckles on him because freckles are very cute. Oh, but freckles are so hard to draw in Medibang because Medibang doesn't like, if I just do single dots, it doesn't register. I'm torn. <laughs> I'm using blue for the eyes because blue is a nice contrast to orange. It's complementary. 
it's a complementary color, so it will kind of make him look a little more striking. I also saw a bit of blue in the eye that I'm referencing off to the side as well. Webtoon artist. It's like, I don't... I'm not kind of styling it like the way a webtoon is. I personally am not a huge fan of that, like illustrating that. We probably, thank you, Yuri. Um, like the scrolling kind of type. I prefer just like classic kind of comic style. You know what I'm saying? Just like the, like the pan, like the bigger kind of panels side by side, like a like a Marvel comic or whatever. Those are the kinds of that I prefer to illustrate compared to like just like a class, like a webtoon style, which is like really good for mobile and scrolling. Personally, I'm more of whoops. I'm more for illustrating the uh, kind of the classic comic way, but yeah, because not all comics, all webtoons are web comics, but not all web comics are webtoons. That's usually what a lot of comic artists like to stress. <laughs> That all webtoons are web comics, but not all web comics are webtoons. You know what I'm saying? I may want to change the color because I'm gonna have to figure out how I want to do these ears because they're a little bit translucent, and the airbrush in Medibang is not that great. So <laughs> I have to figure out how to do it. Um. Hmm, let's try something. I really didn't, huh? Alright, no, let's do that then. This is me getting fancy with my... <laughs> with how I'm drawing this. Um, okay, why is my correction not on? Okay, let's turn that off. I want to try something different with this. Sorry about that. All right, let's see if this is gonna work because I don't know if it will or not. It should though. No. Oh, I didn't. <sighs> Sorry, if I go silent for a really long time, it's because I'm kind of focusing. I'm trying to figure out how to do this because I really want this to work. Because I kind of want that translucent effect that I had going on or that I wanted to do. Nice. I'll fix it up afterwards as well. Because this is not 100% what I want it to look like. But this will do for now. This should kind of be blended in just a little bit because it's the base of the ear. This one's hard to do though because I can't like blend quite. 
quite the same way. Don't think. Yeah, this is what I get for getting fancy, is that, like, there's not a lot of commentary I can say. I'm just, like, trying to figure it out <laughs> slowly. <laughs> Oh, but this is going to look weird if I have the background as well. Man! Okay. Wait. Let's do that first then, so then I can. A lot of digital artist problem solving as well. I don't think I've talked about that, but a lot of digital artist problem solving. Like, a lot of it is just kind of like, uh, can I do this? I don't know. <laughs> It's a little awkward around there because of the way that the man okay okay I'm gonna have to fix that too then bro all right yeah a lot of it is problem solving and just kind of like figuring stuff out it's rare that like you have a digital art like you have a lot of professional digital artists that like like to tout that they know exactly what they're doing all the time and it's not true <laughs> like Like, not to be like, oh, yeah, it's like, oh, it's like the digital artists are self-righteous. Like, they're not, but, like, there's so much that you can do with digital art, and it's like you're constantly learning. It, with artists in general, you're constantly learning, and you're constantly improving. And, like, how you learn and improve, like, 90% of the time is just with just, like, trial and error. <laughs> Try to figure stuff out. Just do it. I am just doing it. I'm figuring it out. But that's still not really what I want. It's like hard to get this transition because it's not really oops oh no 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 I wanted this the airbrush is always so intense like I don't mean it to be it needs to be like the opacity needs to be down so low I guess that's what I don't like about many things. Airbrush is so intense. There's always ways to fix it. Always. That's what trial and error is for. As much as I dislike the airbrush, it does come in handy sometimes. Why do I dislike the airbrush? It's just like, you know. Sometimes it's just it doesn't it doesn't have quite the amount of control that I usually like to have with my illustrations, you know what I'm saying? And let's use a G pen or whatever this color is. I just like that kind of Interesting one, isn't it? This is going to be the rocks. No, I need a folder. Always use your folders. Folders are the best things that you could ever get. I'm just saying. Can I become a fish? Hello, Josh Stubbs. Um, you can absolutely become a fish, man. Follow your dreams, dude. I too wish that I could become a fish. Why am I doing the background first? Uh, I don't know. I just started doing it. <laughs> I probably should be working on the actual illustration first, but oh well. Now I'm just kind of feeling like filling in this background a little bit.
When you're doing backgrounds, try not to get hung up on them. Usually people aren't going to pay that much attention to them anyway. So it's like... You know, still try with them, obviously. But, like, don't don't get, like, so upset if, like, you don't do a tree perfectly or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Just, like, kind of... Kind of get the textures in there. Unless if the background is, like, kind of important or, like, in the foreground. You really don't have to worry about it that much, you know? I'm just trying to add in a variety, a little bit of variety of textures and movement in here, you know. Because if I just kind of keep it one solid color, it's going to look really boring. So I'm just kind of adding some variety into this background-ish thing. I wonder if I could do something fancy with the background. I'll figure that out. Yeah, because I still got like a half hour or so left. So I have time to mess around a little bit more. Gonna pop up these values too. They're so low. Okay. I should have made it so it's a little bit larger at the front. That would have been perspective. But I didn't do that, and I should have. <laughs> I gotta go, but I love him. Okay, thanks for joining Fish Taco Salad. Remember that the final illustration will be available on our Discord that you can check out in the link in the description. But if you want the working file, you're going to have to join our Patreon. Oh, I missed a spot here. Oopsies. I could just like... Whoops. I'm gonna play with light sources a little bit. I kind of want the light source to be like hitting directly on him. Like a flashlight. <laughs> An enthusiastic goodbye from Yuri. It'll look a little bit better. Oh, let's actually change this just a little bit too light, I think. That's the hue saturation slider. If you ever run a pinch, your hue saturation slider is your best friend. Oops. That should be the slider. There we go. Taco salad sounds good. Taco salad sounds so... I think there is a taco salad, isn't there? I swear. There's like an actual dish that's called like taco salad. It sounds so unhealthy for you. <laughs> but also, it sounds really good <laughs> as well. Oops. This is a whitish... Shadow should be a little bit closer to gray if the light is very white. Oh, 
it should be the start of the run. Should be more like that. Can you shade with black? Technically, yes. Just depends on which situation you're in. This demo has a background. Yeah, I, the fish the fish lesson was very very short. So there wasn't that much to talk about, so I was like, why as well just go like crazy for the <laughs> for the actual illustration, you know? Or a little bit more crazy. Still won't be as intense as anything else that I draw, but this, if it is affected by that, then it should be. Sorry, because I'm getting fancy with lighting, so now I have to, like, think. <laughs> if that's like that, it should be a little bit on the edges as well. A little bit of edge shadow. I'm probably going to have to end up adding a second layer of shadows to this so I can kind of bump it up a little bit further. Remember, there are main things you want to think about when you are adding shadows to anything. You know what I'm saying? We had a lighting a lighting stream a little while back, not too far back. So if you want to reference that, please do. I kind of like the way I taught that one actually, so <laughs> So check out the lighting demo if you want to kind of figure out what my checklist is. Or the lighting stream. Alright, we actually have plenty of time left. It's not too crazy. Shading hair is like, as much as I love drawing hair, shading hair is like one of my worst enemies. It's so hard sometimes. Because there's just so much. <laughs> there's so much you have to remember and look at and deal with. See, I'm selling this one. I'm cell shading it, but I don't want it to be completely cell. I kind of want to soft shade it over a couple of areas. Because right now it's very, very silled. Hello. It's okay. Don't worry. Welcome in, Gigi. Glad you can make it regardless. You'll always be able to replay it, even if you are a little bit late. Ugh, these shadows are rough. That's what I get for staying zoomed out for so long. <laughs> Oops. Excuse me, why did my... Usually I should stay pretty zoomed out, but in this case I'm kind of, I'm being a little bit more cautious. Yeah, 
because I'm trying to think of it as like as if it's all like kind of spot on. Looks nice. Thank you. So this time's cool because of the shadow over here. There he is what has light shadows all around the edges here. Because of the way that the light is hitting everything. So it kinda has all this all of these should have a bit of edge shadows. here as well. This should have a bit of an edge here. Maybe covered up a bit by this one. A bit on the bottom here. Actually, no, this should be okay on the top here. That should have some on the bottom there. Because if the light is kind of up here-ish. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Mental checklists. Mental checklists of where lighting and stuff should go. This should actually be on the bottom here because if it's a little bit higher up. Yeah. Okay. ever unsure about stuff just like physically say it to yourself I'll, I'll always say that it's like one weird trick that i always it always works for me and it always tends to work for other people as well is like if you're ever struggling with something physically tell yourself what you're looking at and physically tell yourself how you should approach it and somehow it works <laughs> it's like okay so if this is here then if the light is coming from here then this area should be you know <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's usually a little bit easier if you just physically tell yourself what you're trying to do This one's cool because a shadow here, and this one will cause a shadow here because it is lifted up. And this one will cause shadows all around here because the edge is hitting the side, I think. This one will be in shadow as well, just a little bit. Not if you're unsure, you know? Always go with your gut as well. If you think that something looks wrong, it probably is. You're into it. Your artistic intuition is stronger than you might think. So if something looks a little bit incorrect, it probably is. Even if you're like, say if you're working in perspective, you're actually working with a perspective grid, sometimes it'll feel off. So just fix it. Because if it feels off, it most likely is. Oh, we've got about 15-ish more, so that's fine. That should be plenty of time, I think. Yeah, I want a second layer of shadow. Whoops! Might help with some areas being bumped up just a smidge. Oops. That's a little too dark. Sometimes you just kind of need a second layer of shadows just to make everything feel a little bit more dimensional. Oh, 
I usually do this on the same layer, but I'm kind of feeling doing it on multiple just for this, just this once. Especially on the head area here, because this is kind of like bothering me. There'll probably be just like a little bit of subsurface around here, but not a crazy amount. Just because of like the way that everything is positioned and the way that everything is lit, it won't be like crazy. But there'll be just enough for emphasis, you know? Sorry, suction cups are <laughs> just focusing on the suction cups for a sec. Okay, we're almost done. Got a little bit left. Just bumping up these shadows a little bit, making them just a little bit more dynamic. We're gonna need a layer for the light as well. So I want a little bit of highlights. Also going to just fix up the way that these eyes look because I want to make them a little bit cuter. So let's just turn up the saturation. That's how you make everything cuter. Is just turn up the saturation. <laughs> I mean, the orange is very kind of muted regardless. It's a little bit nicer to have. This kind of, this color kind of help point out the eyes a little bit more. Oops. Usually I don't make my pupils completely black. I know that that's like not accurate, but <laughs> I usually like to add a little bit of color on the middle just because I think it's fun. Like I know that that's not very like accurate or whatever, but it's, it's more fun that way, I guess. Okay. Couple more layers. Look at that, that's a lot of layers for me. <laughs> more than six, incredible. This is a technique that I got from doll artists. This is called body blushing. It's when you, um, you know, add just a little bit of extra redness or color around specific points of the face. So that includes the face, the um, joints, and a bit of the pectorals and whatever. Those tend to make the face look just a little bit more full of life. 
if you ever want to get art tips from someone, reference a doll artist. They know everything. I've said that before, but I'll say it again. Doll artists know, like, everything. They're, like, concept designers and uh, costume designers. and They're, like, they're so good. <laughs> they know anatomy really well, generally. So it's, like, and they're, they're painters. They're, like, they do everything. So, like, if you ever wanted, like, an artist to reference off of that you need like assistance like with anything a doll artist find a doll artist if you need inspiration or tips for anything that is a lot of so yeah it's a lot for me um for like single illustrations like this if i was to be like for a comic page this is about right but yeah just like for a normal illustration yeah no this is a lot <laughs> yeah you can see the difference it looks really flat without it right it kind of gives it like a nice dimension when you add a bit of brushing all right and let's fix my shadows a little bit as well what is it? It's cute. Hello, Rose Velvet. This is a Dumbo octopus. Little Dumbo octopus boy. We talked a bit about fish. Adorable. Thank you. He is a little adorable. I had fun doing this one. <laughs> All right. A little bit of subsurface because we're. Just for time, I'm going to just lock it and use the airbrush. Normally, I'd blend this in with the J-Pen, but a little bit lazy right now. <laughs> yay, fish. Yay, fish. The stream's almost complete, um, but yeah, glad you could join. He is a Dumbo octopus. adding a little bit of color to the edges of the shadows makes it feel a little bit more lifelike considering how it's getting its light is this isn't really realistic like generally this much subsurface would not be happening but it kind of it kind of makes it look a little bit cuter i guess <laughs> it's actually a little bit more realistic if i left it a little bit more gray toned just because of how this flashlight is hitting this character right so it would be it would make a little bit more sense if there wasn't any light at all um but Yeah. Let's really turn down this opacity because I know that Medibang really likes to up its opacity. It really likes to make its airbrush really intense for some reason. I'm glad to. Yay! Okay, let's make this a subtraction brush just for a second, because I don't think I should have done that. <laughs> should I just make this blocks of color instead? That might actually look better instead of me using the... a little bit better if I just use blocks of color instead of this should go underneath my shadows yeah yeah I'm trying to get better at matching my lighting style to my shadows because I always find that my lights end up feeling disconnected from my shadows which is like not what I want so I'm trying to like make them feel a little bit more cohesive overall. Okay. 
I don't know if anything that I'm saying is making sense, by the way. I'm just, like, <laughs> like, talking about, like, the things that I am thinking about in terms of, like, how I want to improve my artwork sometimes. Because, like, you know, I'm not perfect either, right? It's, like, I, I have things that I want to improve on and get better at. So I'm sorry if anything that I'm talking about doesn't really make sense. You know, I might as well try with the freckles because, like... It's really annoying to draw freckles on MediBank, though, because I don't have a freckle brush, and MediBank doesn't register... Oops, this should actually be above this layer. Um, MediBank doesn't register if I just tap once. I have to actually physically, like, draw small, really small lines. And that can end up looking like way too thick a lot of the time. Yeah, because it's like, it doesn't register just single dots. So like, I have to go like really slow. Or because I have to draw like little lines or like larger dots which can get really hard to do. I kind of wish it registered single dots, you know? I get why they didn't do it, so it's, like, easier to, like, not have, like, accidental single dots just on a random layer, but, like... Man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm also going to change the color because it's a little bit too dull. Whoops. There we go. That's a little bit better. Oh, I forgot the hair. <laughs> I forgot to fix that one. Nice. less dull. There's a really fast way to do this in more advanced programs, but I actually don't like the super fast way. It gives me a little bit less control. I've used it a few times, which is, if you don't know what it is, it's adding an inner glow, and not a lot of... I think it's Photoshop exclusive that has that function. Um, for a lot of other programs, you have to do it manually, but it can get like really hard to do. <laughs> Mostly just because it, it, it doesn't give you... If you're doing a really quick illustration, it's perfect. It w works just really quickly. But it doesn't give you a lot of control. So, like, I don't use it very often, that technique. So usually I just like to brush it in myself. The subsurface scattering edges. Yeah, I think we're almost done here. I'm trying to decide whether I want to color in my lines or not because I'm not sure how good it will look. Oh yeah, that works in some areas. Okay, I'll do it for some sections. For the little details, it just helps them like Make sure that they're not popping out too much. Just coloring in inner lines makes things look a little bit nicer. You don't have to worry about um, coloring in all your outer lines quite as much, like your silhouette. You can if you'd like to, but personally for me, I like to kind of keep them not colored. Something 
hair, feel a little bit less clunky, just a smidge. Okay. With that, though, I think that's going to do it for this stream. So, if you, once again, before we finish it off, if you did not know, we are an art studio, not just a YouTube channel, so it is me and a few other instructors here, uh, because we do teach classes, not just these YouTube streams. So, if you would like to check out any of the classes that we offer, be sure to check out our website, which is in the link in the description, um, to check out all of our class offerings. Summer camp is also coming up, so if you'd like to sign up for summer camp, be sure to check it out there. Um, this file, along with this original lesson that I taught today, will both be available on Discord, which you can download as JPEGs. Be sure to check out the link for our Discord to join it, um, and you'll get access to all of these files as JPEGs. Download them, keep them safe, and do whatever you want with them. Just do not repost them. But if you notice that there is a lot of layers here, if you would like to see any of these layers, again, keep them and see what I have done, be sure to check out our Patreon, which is where you can see all of my working files. Um, well, not all of them, but a lot of them, <laughs> where you will get access to my working files, and you will also get access to um, behind the scenes of Wing Canvas. Thank you, Yuri. Um, Yuri is also one of our lovely um, instructors here at the studio, so if you would like to check out anything that we offer, be sure to check it out there. Next week, we are going to be talking about the principle of design movement, so if you would like to learn a bit more, we have already done all of the elements of art here on the channel. We are moving on to the principles of design, so uh, next week will be all about movement. We have already done uh, contrast, I believe, so movement is coming up, and then after that is the reptile stream finishing off our animal series, but yeah, guys, thank you so, so much for joining and I will see y'all next week. Bye-bye.